Conair is excited to offer a new, very important member of the Earth Smart heat transfer product arsenal, adiabatic tower systems. But first, let's do a little heat transfer review to make sure everyone is on the same page. Just as in plastic production processes, the change of state for any material requires latent energy in addition to the energy required to change the temperature. As we can see here, the change of state in water from a liquid to a vapor requires considerable latent energy to accomplish this task. We will also need to make sure we understand both dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures. Dry bulb temperature, as the name suggests, is measured with a thermometer that has a dry bulb and represents the ambient temperature without any evaporation influence. Wet bulb temperature, also as the name suggests, is measured with a bulb of the thermometer covered in a dampened wick. As the water evaporates from the wick, the latent energy required for that evaporation cools the thermometer bulb. The difference between dry and wet bulb temperatures represents the ability of the ambient air to accept additional moisture. The wider the gap between dry and wet bulb temperatures, the more moisture the air has the ability to accept. Evaporative cooling towers take advantage of this to cool process water. As warm water is introduced into the top of the cooling tower, it falls in droplets through the tower decking. The cooling tower fan circulates air across those droplets, evaporating a portion of the water. The latent energy required for that evaporation cools the remaining water, which is collected at the bottom of the tower and is circulated to the process loads. Cooling tower capacity can be regulated by turning the fan or fans on and off, varying the volume of airflow through the tower, as with a fan's variable frequency drive or varying the volume of the water delivered to the tower as with a pump's variable frequency drive. The standard design conditions for an evaporative cooling tower are water enters at 95 degrees F and leaves at 85 degrees F with a 78 degree ambient wet bulb while circulating three gallons per minute per cooling tower ton. For cooling towers, we speak in terms of an approach temperature of 7 degrees F. That means that we can provide a leaving water temperature 7 degrees above the ambient wet bulb temperature. We should make a distinction between chiller tons and cooling tower tons. A chiller ton is 12,000 BTUs per hour and is derived from the amount of energy required to melt one ton of ice over a 24 hour period. A cooling tower ton is 15,000 BTUs per hour and was derived from the average energy required to cool the condenser of a one ton chiller. So what consumes water in a cooling tower? Well, we already talked about the evaporation of water that provides the cooling effect. But there are other things that use the water as well. Blowdown, for instance, is used to ensure that the amount of dissolved solids in the water remaining behind after the evaporation process do not rise to a level that can collect on other heat transfer surfaces, making the system less efficient. And drift is an amount of water droplets that are blown away from the tower system, either by the tower fan or by the action of wind. So what alternatives do we have for evaporative cooling towers? Fluid coolers also known as dry coolers, could be used. Processed fluid is circulated through the tube and fin coils in the cooler and fans circulate ambient air over the coil to transfer energy from the coil to the air. The cooled processed fluid is then returned to the process. Very simple. And fluid coolers use no water for evaporation. So why don't we use these more often? Well, the standard design conditions for a fluid cooler are water enters at 115 degrees F and leaves at 105 degrees F with 95 degree ambient dry bulb while circulating 2.6 gallons per minute of a glycol solution per chiller ton. 
For fluid coolers, we can expect an approach temperature of 10 degrees F. That means that we can provide a leaving water temperature 10 degrees above the ambient dry bulb temperature. Some process loads may not be able to accept fluid temperatures of 105 to 115 degrees F, so we are not able to use this solution for such applications. When we compare the fluid cooler to a traditional evaporative cooling tower in higher ambient air conditions, we can see that an evaporative cooling tower is able to provide more acceptable water temperatures for sensitive process loads. So what alternatives do we have without using all of the water that evaporative systems require? Conair's EarthSmart Adiabatic Cooling Tower. So what is it? If we take a traditional fluid cooler and add a wetting pad assembly on the air inlet to cool the incoming air, we have the reliability and cleanliness of the fluid cooler and the water temperature capability of an evaporative cooling tower. We have Conair's EarthSmart adiabatic cooling tower. And the EarthSmart tower comes complete with everything required to optimize electrical energy usage as well, along with miserly water consumption. With no open, recirculated water, we now have cleaner process water and no requirement for a water treatment specialist. Water pads, wetted by a controlled flow from the top of each pad, means no spray nozzles are required to clean and no water mists in the air. If you remember the fluid cooler design, we were producing leaving fluid temperatures 10 degrees F above the ambient dry bulb condition. The adiabatic effect of the EarthSmart tower utilizes wetting of the pads on the air inlet and through evaporation of just the pad water lowers the dry bulb temperature entering the fluid cooler coil. This creates leaving water temperatures that are much closer to those available in an evaporative cooling tower. In operation, as the ambient dry bulb temperature rises above the transition set point, and leaving water temperature set point can no longer be maintained by simply running the fans, the cooling water solenoid valve will open, allowing water to soak the pads and lower the dry bulb air temperature entering the coils. Units can be sized to deliver leaving fluid temperatures of 85 degrees F with ambient conditions of 95 degrees F dry bulb and 77 degrees F wet bulb. EarthSmart adiabatic towers are capable of depressing the dry bulb temperature to 82% of the difference between the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures. So the approach temperature can be sized as close as about 5 degrees F. That means that the leaving fluid temperature can be as low as 85 degrees F with ambient conditions of 95 degrees F dry bulb and 77 degrees F wet bulb. In some parts of the country, ambient conditions can cause the leaving water temperature to rise above 85 degrees F. Conair's energy analysis program will provide you with an estimate of the highest possible leaving water temperature expected and importantly, an estimate of how many hours during the year the temperature could be above this design criteria. Now here is a brief comparison of a typical 100 ton traditional evaporative cooling tower and an adiabatic dry cooler used in the Chicago area. We can see that evaporative cooling towers are typically much taller, weigh a bit more, and require much more maintenance than an adiabatic cooler. But importantly, note the water usage differences. Three and a half million gallons of water will be used by the evaporative cooling tower. What does three and a half million gallons look like? Well, it looks like this. Five Olympic-sized swimming pools full of water will be evaporated over the course of one year. Here are the components of the EarthSmart water distribution system showing the solenoid valve that provides water to the wetting pads. 
Also, the single drain connection point, accompanied by the stainless steel collection troughs, allow neat and easy management of any water that is not evaporated. Wetting pads are easily removable for maintenance, cleaning, or even removal during colder months. Even the water distribution system has a clean-out plug for easy back flushing of the supply water trough. Maintenance is simple on the Earth Smart Tower, and in most areas requires just a visual inspection. The fan motors do not require a lubrication regimen, and wetting pads may require cleaning or replacement depending upon local water quality. Coils may require cleaning if pads are removed for winter operation. Electrically commutated EC fan motors provide variable frequency type efficiency with even more control in an integrated package. Modbus communication from the unit controller to each motor in the system ensures precise control and performance. Soft start and icebreaker modes protect fan blade integrity and provide long life. In the unlikely event of a failure, the entire assembly is replaced as a unit. No gear pullers, fan balancing, or belt tensioning is ever required. And each EC fan motor's modular design includes the fan blades themselves, pre-mounted to the end of the motor assembly. High efficiency blades are a pre-balanced part of the motor assembly, making service and replacement, if ever necessary, a fast and simple operation. Fan energy savings are significant with speed controlling fan motors versus turning the fans on and off. The fan laws determining energy usage by reduced fan capacity is a cubic relationship. As you can see in this example of a four fan unit, by simply reducing all of the EC fan motors to 75% capacity, we save in excess of double the energy consumed by just shutting off one fan. This trend continues as we reduce capacity to 50% and use only 25% of the energy running all four fans at 50% than is used by running only two of the four fans. Once we get to 25% capacity, we are using only 5% of the energy to run all four fans at 25% versus running only one of the four fans very real electrical energy savings, thanks to advanced EC fan motor technology. The application specific PLC in the Earth Smart Tower Control is what allows accurate temperature control while consuming a minimum of energy to meet leaving fluid set points. Each fan motor has an individual circuit breaker for motor protection. Units operating in very cold environments can be equipped with a control panel heater to keep the enclosure space at a reliable operating temperature. Signals from the pump tank control panel of the system provide start-stop commands to the tower and adjust the leaving fluid set point. A night activation signal is included that will initiate a specific fan speed pre-programmed for quiet operation for areas with an after-hours nighttime ambient sound restriction. Additional tower control capabilities allow the pump tank to receive on-off confirmation, alarm notification, and motor percent speed. The Conair heat transfer team has a goal and a promise to provide an alternative to evaporative cooling towers for applications that require cleaner process fluids and minimal water consumption. While adiabatic cooling has significant water consumption advantages, not every application can take advantage of this technology. For instance, Conair will provide glycol in areas that may be subject to below freezing temperatures. And in most cases, Conair will pair this adiabatic technology with additional system components to provide our customers with a complete solution. While we can provide units that deliver a maximum leaving fluid temperature of 85 degrees F, our best targets for success may be those processors that can operate at slightly higher than typical 
cooling tower temperatures. Conair will provide the support you have come to expect from us. A full lineup of marketing resources, face-to-face -face sales support, service, and parts support. And a new tool has been developed by Conair for this product, a utility analysis tool. A simple, easy-to-read report defines the input data utilized in the energy cost estimate. A concise summary of electrical kilowatts used, water used, and quantified dollar values for both utilities are shown. A specification sheet and instruction manual are ready for your review on our website, www.conairgroup.com. The spec sheet details Conair EarthSmart adiabatic tower units starting with just two fans, capable of handling about 50 GPM, up to a double row 18 fan unit that can handle over 500 gallons per minute of processed fluid. And we have prepared an extensive array of system flow diagrams that represent what most Conair heat transfer customers are looking for in adiabatic systems. Let's take a look at a couple of them. This is an example showing the EarthSmart tower on the right serving machine loads and providing the condenser medium for a chiller serving the material loads. Incorporated into the system is a free cooling heat exchanger to allow the EarthSmart tower to provide chilled water for material loads at lower ambient conditions. For applications requiring a more conventional approach to localized chilling and temperature control, this drawing illustrates an adiabatic system integrated with Conair's EP series chillers and thermolator temperature controllers by each processing machine. Conair's dedicated heat transfer team includes experts in component and system design, installation, field service, and of course, field-oriented application sales and support. And Conair Parts and Service Departments are on call 24-7 every day of the year. Thanks for watching.